My team does a ton of recruiting in IT and computer engineering. It is an area of passion for me. I love working on different software development roles um, and, and so does my team. So we do a ton of it. And a lot of the candidates that we work with, they prepare for the technical aspects of an interview as well they should, but they don't spend as much time talking about the soft skill questions they might encounter as a computer engineering professional in the interview process. In today's video, I'm going to give you seven popular questions that are asked to IT and computer engineering professionals in an interview, and I'm gonna show you how to answer them. Let's go. Now, the first one that you might encounter is describe a time that you failed at something. This is great because it gives people an insight into, well, when have you failed? What have you dealt with it? And what was your response? And what was the thing you failed on? Now, when you're answering a question like this, I really have two rules that I want you to use. The first one is the STAR method. So the STAR method is situation, task, action, result. Anytime someone says, tell me about a time, that's a behavioral interview question. And they're looking for you to recall a time and they wanna know your behavior when it came to dealing with that situation. So using the STAR method provides you with a framework on how to answer it. Again, situation, what was the situation you were in? Task, what was the task that you had to you know, complete? Action, what was your specific action and result? What was the result of you going through and doing this? Now, in this situation, you failed. So you wanna talk through that. You also wanna talk about what you learned, right? So at the end of that, when you talk about how you failed, you wanna talk about what it was that you learned um, whenever it was that you ended up failing at. Now the second lesson um, or the second rule that I like people to um, use when they answer a question like this is the 50% rule. The 50% rule means anytime you're asked to reference something about you failing or coming up short, um, short or not doing something well, use an example from the first 50% of your career. That way you're putting a little bit of distance between the mistake and you today. So for example, if you are an eight year professional, make it from year three or four, right? That gives you enough time to talk about something authentic, talk about what you've learned, talk about how you've modified your behavior since then, but it's also a long time ago. It is obvious that you wouldn't make a mistake like that today because you have grown so much. The next question you might get asked as a tech professional is what are you currently learning? Now, why would they ask you this question? They would ask you this question because they wanna make sure that you're the type of person who is continuing to hone their skill and that you are a lifelong learner. It is no secret that in tech, things are rapidly changing and evolving. Um, so somebody who is satisfied just learning something, maybe getting their degree, getting a few years, and not, not continuing to hone their craft is someone who is going to be left behind as technology continues to evolve. So when they're asking you, what are you currently learning? It would behoove you to have something you are practicing, maybe outside of work on getting better. Maybe you're learning a new language, a new framework. Maybe you're doing a passion project that has allowed you to expand your skills. But this is a question you wanna be ready for. And as long as you have something prepared that shows you are motivated, you are learning, and you're the type of person who's going to continue to adapt and evolve, you're gonna do just fine. What are you looking for in this role? So this is the type of thing that can be really easy to make a huge slip up if you do something that is um, a bit illogical, and that's name something this role doesn't have, right? So it's really important to be familiar with the job description because if they say, hey, what do you wanna do in your next job? Or why do you wanna do this role? Or what are you looking forward to doing in this role? And you give them an example of something that you actually won't be doing, that is not going to be good. So this is an easy question. As long as you come prepared, you're familiar with the job description, and you're ready to talk about a task that you are going to be doing in this role that you have seen in the job description. The next question you might be asked is who inspires you? This is an interesting question, um, but I think it's an awesome opportunity to explain why you chose this field, who you admire. There are so many great answers. The only great answer is not having one, really. I'm sure there are actually other terrible answers, but as long as you have a good relevant answer and you have a good reason as to why, why does this person inspire me? You're going to crush this interview question, but it's a great opportunity to showcase your passion and interest in the industry. This isn't just a job for you. This is something that excites you, motivates you, and this person, well, they're part of your why. The next question you might be asked to answer is show me a product you were involved in building. Um, this is really cool, and you should have an answer here. One of the things that I always tell people to do is you know, go back and familiarize yourself with your resume and what you've done. Pick out one to two accomplishments at every single role you've been in and familiarize yourself with them. Write down what was a project, how many people were in it, 
How long did it take? What were the lessons learned? Familiarize yourself with exactly what you did, your contribution, and be ready to speak to this, and it'll be really easy to impress them. Now remember, if what you were doing is, what, or what you did is similar to what you'd be doing as an employee, that's even better. If there is overlap, crossover, similarities, and you can show what you did, the business impact, and what your actual specific contribution was, that is going to be very impressive. The next question you might be asked are, what are your career aspirations? So why do they ask this? One of the reasons is that the market is so competitive for developers and, and other people in this space that they wanna make sure that you're gonna be there for a little bit. The biggest key when you're asked, where do you wanna be in five years? Or what are you looking for in your future? Or what are your career aspirations? Is you don't completely leapfrog this, this role. So whenever I tell people um, how to answer this, the way I, I say is the first thing you wanna do is you wanna reinforce your, behavior, your uh, interest in the role you are interviewing for now. So you wanna say, you know, right now, what I'm really excited about is taking on a role like the one I'm interviewing for. This is exciting to me, the type of work that I'm, I'm gonna be doing. That's part one. I wanna get really good at this type of work and I wanna expand my expertise in this specific area. Now down the road, I could see myself moving into ABC, right? But you don't wanna leapfrog this role without expressing, hey, yeah, I have career aspirations, but I'm really interested right now in this. The last question we're gonna talk about today and part two comes out next week. Um, but the last question today is why do you do what you do? And this is a question you should absolutely be ready to talk about, right? What they're looking for here is passion. The reality is while a job is a job, every hiring manager wants to hire someone who is passionate about what they do because people who are passionate they just do better work. So this is an opportunity for you to talk about why you chose engineering. Why did you choose to be a computer engineer, a developer, an IT expert, whatever it is, it's a great way to showcase your why, showcase your passion. Maybe it was a story of when you were a little kid, maybe it's someone you know, maybe it's a company you admired, maybe it was a hobby that turned into a career. Whatever it is, have a really passionate why. Doing that will allow them to imagine you as a contributing member of the team and get them really excited about what you're gonna to bring to the table. Now, there are a lot of great jobs out there for developers, but there are also a lot of really bad jobs. And I want you to avoid those jobs, so watch this video right here. This is red flags for anybody who is in a development, computer engineering, software engineering, IT role. Watch for these in your interview.